It's fine. Okay, I think we are. Uh... Are we live? Yeah, it shows live. Yeah, I think we are live. We are so live. We yeah, we are live. All yeah. right. I'll just check if you're also live there. Are we on YouTube? Can you see us on YouTube? Yeah, I think we are on YouTube. I think I'm seeing some messages also, also coming in. So I think we are live. Okay. And, uh, okay. Yeah. So. <clears throat> and. Uh, okay. So, yes, I'm seeing also. Namaste, Guruji. Somebody. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, so good evening and uh, welcome everyone. I think uh, this is a very important day. This is being the day of the Mahasamadhi of Swami Vivekananda, and therefore. Uh, it, it also is a day when I think it's important for many of us to also look at uh, the current situation that we seem to be in and this and uh, where we seem to be heading. And uh, this uh, podcast is uh, fundamentally based on that as well. In addition to uh, examining, and that's why it's called, you know, uh, Vivekananda, Sadhana, Shatrubodh and uh, Swamiji, because uh, we were just having a conversation just before we went live and uh, Sri Guru mentioned that one of the most important things is that, you know, Swami Vivekananda was one of the earliest people who seemed to recognize the, the importance of uh, Shatrubodh. Shatrubodh essentially does not, essentially means understanding what, who your uh, people who are inimical to, not just you, but your entire dharma itself. And therefore, to your existence. Yeah, to, your very existence. Yeah. Yeah, to, to, the, to the very existence. So it is in that context that we are having this uh, conversation. Look, there look, been, look, at, look at these jokers. Look at these jokers <laughs> with these comments. <laughs> <laughs> so they want me to play, play Spaghetti. <laughs> 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 Continue, 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 continue. So, uh, so what, so what we will do is, you know, that there are some questions that have come up. We will address mm. the questions as we uh, go along. Mm. Uh, but, but I also felt that right at the beginning, there is a need for people to get a, uh, a broader understanding of what actually constitutes sadhana itself. Yes. In, 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 in the context of uh, what we say, because everybody seems to be talking of sadhana, but I'm not very sure if people do understand. So if I could start with uh, requesting you to speak about that in general and then we will go into the topic itself om shivachadam brahm namaste to everybody i welcome all my fellow my fellow pagan heathen kafir idolaters <laughs> uh, Swamiji's Mahasamadhi is a day of great power. It should not be wasted. And more importantly, we should not waste our lives in refusing to act upon the insights that Swamiji provided. Swami Vivekananda was the first to articulate that we should oppose conversions because every man who goes out of the Hindu fold is not only one Hindu the less, but one enemy the more. Now, here is the clearest statement of Shatrubodh. Now, I am afraid that for a lot of people, Shatrubodh seems to mean that once you identify that somebody is in the enemy camp or providing aid to the enemy camp, therefore, all you need to do is say they are an enemy and the issue is solved. Mm. I've been seeing this nonsense with the whole Jordan Peterson issue where people are just jumping up and saying he's a Westerner, he's a Christian, that's it. Yes, all that might be true, but that doesn't change the fact that he's a very great man. And when a very great man has gone into the side of being your enemy, and uh, there are people who hang on to his every word, hundreds of millions of people perhaps are just assuming all the nonsense that Mangalwadi said about Hinduism because it was on Peterson's show. Everybody is assuming and, you know, we made the point that he's a man with no social media presence. 
how does this man suddenly get to be on Peterson's podcast? Yeah. You know, just saying that Peterson is a just saying that Peterson is and kind of parochial attitudes that our people have, you know, you which world do you think you're living in that you can afford these luxuries? You know, why should Hindu gurus speak about Jordan Peterson? Are you out of your mind? Jordan Peterson has single-handedly, perhaps he has more impact on the collective consciousness of the world than all our gurus put together. That's an unpleasant reality that we have to face. And, you know, when somebody attacks you, you cannot sit in this mountaintop of indifference and smugness and say that, uh, you know, we don't need to respond because we are, uh, uh, you know, Janma Siddha, some sort of uh, Janma Siddha Murkha, most likely. You know, I, I, I find that whole attitude amazing. I find that whole, these kind of weak arguments these kind of pathetic arguments with no achievements of one own. You know, Swami Vivekananda once said that if all of India took all the mud at the bottom of the Indian Ocean and threw it on the West, it would still only be a fraction of the abuse that the missionaries heaped on us. That abuse and that process is still continuing and all we think we need to say is, oh, that's a missionary or that's a, you have, have you not read Rajiv Malhotra's Breaking India book? Have you not seen how planned, organized, coordinated, international level this thing is being done? And your only response to say he's a Westerner? Your only response is to say, Yes, yesterday on one of my friend's walls, I saw a comment made by a professor in Auburn University. I don't know where it is. Auburn or yellow covered, I don't know what. But, you know, like uh, where he says uh, Hindus uh, in India seem to have a problem living on equal footing with others. This is how deep the propaganda goes. This is how deep and uh, widespread the, the attitude is. From it. Uh, yeah. You know, hum yaha vande pade hoi, we are like discriminated against. We are living in a deeply anti-Hindu society. And we are told that we are the ones who don't want equality. We are practically on the edge of slavery. All our social institutions have decided to become halal certified and Sharia compliant. And then we are being lectured. And our only response is to say, oh, he's a Western Christian. This is an absurd situation. This is a truly absurd situation. Okay, leave that. So that was the first part. We'll talk a little bit about Shatrubodh and its necessity. The second part is why did we include sadhana? Because you see, uh, our social institutions have failed us. Our cultural institutions have failed us. Our religious institutions have completely failed us. And about our political institutions, the less said, the better. Because, you know, on uh, Swamiji's Mahasamadhi day, one should not indulge in vituperation, you know, and chitta pollution should not happen. Just speaking about pollution, politics and politics, politicians itself is chitta pollution, but especially on his Mahasamadhi day. So now the only, the only way forward is individual Shakti. The only way forward is what I keep repeating again and again and again and again and again, become undeniable. Become undeniable. How many people have written to me saying, when I say these things, when I try to speak for Hindu society, my family shuts me down. They say, don't do this. They shut you down because you're not undeniable. If you are a person in a certain position of power, certain amount of money, certain amount of social status, they would not shut you down. They would follow you. Absolutely. The very fact that they are shutting you down means that they are afraid of the manner in which society is constructed. So sadhana as, as, a, as an all-purpose term for developing personal shakti. If enough people develop personal shakti, then society will be transformed. You know, people don't seem to understand the dire necessity of this. On Facebook, we all know very powerful sadhakas, people who have done brilliantly, people who are progressing. Nobody has any illusions about where they are. 
yesterday we talked about one of the uh, one of one of the nine mars you know the hounds of shiva and i very openly said when i look at them i feel useless because their attainments are at such a level so you know the people on our side are not delusional people the people on our side are people who are very much aware what mountains need to be climbed the people on the political side are the delusional people they seem to think that because they vote that all problems are solved and they don't seem to have any idea what kind of uh, river or sewage we are swimming in just had yeah. uh, sorry no yeah, did, did, yeah no just just wanted to uh, check with you do you think the the political class is delusional or are they all uh, you know just being deliberately uh, acting in a way where they are only interested in their own political uh, uh, i think they are partly and, delusional i at this point one one has to concede that they seem to be lacking intellect they seem to be lacking knowledge and they seem to be lacking any kind of buddhi i think uh, that is very much a part of it but the deeper thing is they only care about what they consider will win them votes so you know they they their only principle is a lack of principle so <laughs> so you know <laughs> you know like a politician's principle is to have a severe and utter and complete lack of it mm. and if this hurts Uh, the feelings of people who think we are being governed by avatars and stuff like that you are also delusion <laughs> you know so i i cannot help you i cannot help you if even after all that is happening you cannot wake up and see that politicians are not people you know from our enemy scripture let me quote a very good line very wise and insightful line from the bible put not your trust in princes mm. put not your trust in princes yeah that's very good uh, perspective to live life by they are not your friends netas are not your friends do not ever consider a neta your friend please consider this is a person who could destroy your life like that and you know even swami ji used to say all politics are rubbish i have nothing to do with politics the wisdom of that attitude is more clear than ever today so sadhana in terms of what do we need to do individually because forget collective we are, we don't do very well collectively but if enough people develop shakti then a certain transformation of conscious just one vivekananda was enough to energize india you know do we have anybody in the spiritual field who is at that level because demagoguery is very easy there are enough people who dem- can, can do we have spiritually people we have fortunately we have enough gurus decent gurus authentic gurus people who are actually doing very good work but we still haven't collectively come to a space where there is somebody i'm not saying that we have a spiritual leader or a spiritual pope i'm just saying that we need people who are electrify we need people who are undeniable we need people who are such authentic uh, examples that everybody begins to emulate them you know that's what i'm trying to say so that is possible only when enough people are already doing serious sadhana you know so the sadhana was the second part of what we were supposed to do and then uh, you know the the mahasamadhi and why did we say that we'll do it over here and why are we doing it on ramesh's podcast because the matters are very dire so we need to say a few harsh and unpleasant truths which may not be very welcome you know but uh what what impacts sri ramkrishna mart is doing after oh this is all the same standard ask some standard. new questions here <laughs> come on i'm waiting for cast to come up and sati you know like goodwin's law you know like in the chat cast and sati must come cast and sati will have yeah. come up. And, and and people refuse to read minakshi jain's book on sati because they absolutely absolutely they refuse to read the speaking tree uh, you know the lower castes were prevented from education once you read the speaking tree that thing is blown to smithereens dharmapal's speaking tree uh, the, the they won't read tree. that yeah the beautiful tree yes the beautiful yeah. tree they won't read that they won't read minakshi jain's book on sati but these two dandas are always 
<laughs> used to yeah. beat us, you know. In, in, in fact, uh, you know, in fact, I had a conversation with my, I, my, can I, I'll say it publicly now. I had a conversation with my own uncle yesterday, hmm. and uh, he was uh, saying the same thing about the, uh, you know, about caste and other things, and he was blaming. Hmm. He was saying we have to blame ourselves for all that. Then uh, uh, preventing them. Then uh, luckily, I had a PDF of the beautiful tree on my mobile, so I showed it to him. But even then, he refused to see it. He said, "I don't want to see all this." Because he hmm. says that I know for a fact that you know uh, it is uh, we who have caused all of this, and we are responsible for it. And caste is the reason why we are in in the uh, current situation. When no, his his ego invested in casteism cannot be helped. Right. And once a so, person is ego invested, there is there is no even animals don't help. Correct. Once a person so, is ego invested in a concept, they cannot be. They have they have brainwashed themselves. Yeah, and and I had you to see, ask when you're to, resistant to evidence, when you're resistant to evidence, then you cannot be. There is, yeah, there is, yes. Uh, okay, so I. I, no, I just what were you saying? To, no, no, no. The uh, the thing is that you know, uh, people uh, simply want to. They they not only refuse to read or refuse to, but they also refuse to accept the uh, the re two things. One is the reality of the situation that we find ourselves in. They they're so delusional in terms of. You mentioned that, and I I also recall that statement which you made. In fact, I was making it even today in the morning, which you you keep saying when a person tells you who he is, then believe him. I mean, we we refuse to the, see the reality. Oh of dear, <laughs> we are like no, that they cannot have meant that. No, no, that's not true. They cannot have meant that because we seem to have an incapacity to realize that somebody may dislike us to the point of wanting us to be snuffed out of existence. Mm. We simply cannot comprehend that because that is not a culture. Therefore, we make the mistake of assuming that is the culture of everybody else, which is not true. Which is nowhere true. And this incapacity, this incapacity to comprehend hatred, is the lack of shatru bhoom. You know, this incapacity to comprehend virulence, malevolence against you. You know what does Jordan Peterson say? Let us court the enemy again. What does Jordan Peterson say? Naive people, when confronted with genuine evil malevolence, become helpless. Correct. And that is what we have become. We are helpless before genuine malevolence, and we keep running for saviors who completely hand us over, hand and bound to the enemy. One hundred years back, it was the same. We also had one savior. We were all ego invested in at that time. And we know what happened with that story. Yeah. And now, once again, that story is repeating. And everybody seems to think, oh, this time will be different. No, this time is not going to be different. <laughs> You're was. doing the same thing again. It's it's actually getting worse. Yeah. It's actually getting worse. So, you know, like the, I could answer what is the Ramakrishna mission doing, but we are not the Ramakrishna mission. I'm not asking for a change in the Ramakrishna mission. The Ramakrishna mission is doing what it is doing. They are doing what they think is to be right. May God bless them and bring them to the right path. But I am talking about each one of you. Here, the problem in it in the question is you are outsourcing the solution to another organization. To another. Absolutely. And I am saying it has to come back to the individual Hindu now because all your organizations have let you down all your organizations have betrayed you first of all accept that unpleasant fact and reality you know ki what mountains i had to move just to get a formal refutation a formal rebuttal of jordan peterson mm. thankfully sangam talks rahul divan may you be blessed thankfully uh, sanjay dikshit of jaipur dialogues may he be blessed he agreed to provide his platform also because it is a very strong platform. We do not realize that these things are important and they need dealing with. And not one, except for me, not one spiritual figure, not one has taken umbrage or merely just issued a statement. It was unfortunate that a man like Jordan Peterson provided a platform for this. How long do we live in this ostrich manner? How long do we live in this uh, complete denial of reality? I think the sad truth is also that uh, none of our uh, 
spiritual gurus are even aware of a person called jordan peterson i think that I'm is i'm not the... so sure of that at this point okay. in the world jordan peterson is known everywhere so i'm not so sure that they are not aware and the general idea seems to be this will blow over humne baat dekhe hain we have been here for 6000 years yes and you're collapsing you're shrinking your geographical area of those 6000 years is shrinking you're down to practically 50% of what it used to be and you are celebrating that you know you are celebrating your shrinkage yeah no it's actually exactly 50% chandragupta's yeah. uh, 5 million square kilometers now it's less than 3 yeah. million yeah and out of that also many have already gone out of hand which we are yeah, not yeah. willing to accept <laughs> you know let let us leave that also the point i'm making is not that the point is that somebody who is the most prominent public intellectual has said something he didn't say but he nodded along and went along and made vishesh tipani which was uh, which is completely unacceptable which was to use the favorite word of jordan himself reprehensible you know he made some reprehensible comments which was absolutely not acceptable and we did not uh, we did not find any sense of collective outrage we get outraged only when let me put it very uh, bluntly this is going to be an unpleasant statement that people won't like but i'm going to say it our religion today is politics mm, absolutely we care about politics we don't care about our religion we don't care about our dharma all our investment all our excitement all our uh, emotions are tied up with politics and such a society is not long for the world i can assure you of that in this country at least it doesn't work again swami ji had said the same thing that if india bases itself on dharma then and then alone it will flourish it is too, it is impossible to change that stream and we are trying that now we are trying that we are trying this attitude of trying a political solution to everything we are you know people have abandoned their faith people have abandoned the traditional practices and then they demand that the old traditional places change their rules and regulations to suit their new convenience correct yeah you know previously in a temple you had to go to the temple bath a uh, temple pool pond have a dip then only you could get darshan because that is becoming difficult for people they stopped that in kerala temples you had to take off your shirt then only i think in kerala still it is there still in is other still. places they stopped that you know we are constantly making demands that the tradition bow to our convenience and that must stop that must completely stop this is becoming uh, this is becoming a nuisance now it is becoming a dangerous nuisance if it is just an irritation it is fine but it is becoming a dangerous nuisance yeah i know about that kali video everybody has talked about it that is yeah, again part of the absurdity we we will not well, deal with that triviality that is really a trivial correct. that kali video has been refuted many times yeah that, i think many people post also yeah I, i just wanted to uh, bring in one aspect uh, you know yeah. for for a, for a long time i have held the view that the previous generation you know my my uh, far parents and all that generation was the generation that you know was primarily responsible for a huge drop in uh, this whole uh, in, yes in, in our parents generation are to yeah. be blamed yeah and, 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 you know i i was consistently told that focus only on your studies let's worry about all these things later and all that i i, I somehow you know one stumbled into all of this and therefore i can say that i was saved but what we are finding is that now we have a current generation in, in somewhere in the between the 30s to their 50s who seem to be uh, who have seem to have woken up to the reality but we are also and i'm and i'm bringing in the question that has come up is that we seem to be having a woke generation of our uh, next generation which again we seem to be uh, losing although there are several youngsters who also are on the side we must accept that there are several young people whom we are also losing to this strange woke culture so how do we the question that is coming up is how do we get our children to develop the habit of sadhana practice of the anushthanas and uh, all of these things how do we and how do we help them to uh, realize the uh, the real and imminent danger that they are in right now children imitate what they see if you are not doing sadhana why would they do 
if you don't care about something, why would they? You know, like if you're uh, focus on your studies, then we'll get you married, and then you can, you know, after then you can have children, and then when you retire, you can become spiritual. This has been for this has been for about a hundred years our pattern. This is this is suicide in slow motion. This is absolutely suicidal. This is an attitude that is completely inimical to our culture. All life is yoga. Every single aspect. See, I think the major reason was we are a geographically rooted culture. Our village, our village temple, our Kula Devata. The minute that large parts of urban India began to migrate from the home state, home village, you know, the, the organic transmission of culture broke. That seems to be the reason. To me, at least, that seems to be the reason that there is no connection with the, you know, so uh, first of all, uh, find out where you come from. What is your ancestral village? Find out what are your Kula Devtas. When you have sadhana, bhakti, you know, most people think they are bhaktas. They are not. They have a little bit of bhakti. If you are a genuine bhakta, your ishta would appear in front of you immediately. Since that is not happening, please have some reality of where you are. But, you know, first of all, find out where is your village, what kind of sadhana is done, because those things are easier for you. Maybe you you were born in a Vaishnava family and you find Shakta Tantra easier. That happens. But normally, if you are born in a Vaishnava family, it would be easier for you to continue as a Vaishnava. So find that out. Find out what your village is. What is the temple? Is there a family temple? Is there a family devta? Find all that out and then start developing. You see, and I would also make another prescription, which is very strange. I would say, find one temple and one devta and stick to that and organize your entire spiritual life around that one devta and that one temple. For me, I was... No doubt progressing, but until I found Chidambaram Nataraja and I said, okay, this is it. This is where it culminates. This is where it ends. This is my source. This is my where it flows from. So, you know, that when you donate, donate to that temple. Donate to the people taking care of the temple. Donate to keep the traditions of that temple alive. Donate to make sure that the puja with these are. Go and visit. Take your friends. Take your family. Because of me, a whole lot of people from other parts of India who never even heard Chidambara have ended up in Chidambara. They've ended up doing Giriwala. You know, so find find something that is particular because we are a religion of particular connection to particular Deva. Mm -hmm. You know, like it is not enough to say Shiva. Shiva comes in three major forms. He comes as Nath, he comes as Ishwara, and he comes as, uh, what are the three? The uh, Ishwaran, Nath, and one more. There are three uh, There are three basic variations of how Shiva comes. And all three are different. Ma Mahadeva, 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 Mahadeva. You know, like in Kerala, it is usually Mahadeva temples. In Maharashtra side, it's all Nath temples. In Tamil Nadu, it's all Ishwara. Yes, they are all Shiva, but they are all different kinds and aspects and variations of it. You know, so find and develop with your sadhana, find and develop an organic link to one particular temple and the devta of that temple. And then you will get along much faster and you will become a more prominent and a more uh, powerful person much faster than if you just wander around aimlessly. And unfortunately, mm. that's what we've been doing. We've been wandering around aimlessly. And the same reason, increasing urbanization broke our geographical connection. You see, our temple has to be, Chidambaram cannot be anywhere else. It has to be in that particular geographical spot. Mm. Correct. Kshetra, Kshetra. Kshetra has to be in that particular geographical spot. You know, Perur Shiva temple cannot be anywhere else. It has to be on that particular geographical spot. You know, so I'm not looking at those temples. Uh, I, I'm not looking at the comments uh, at just now because I'm talking. So I'm saying in your sadhana, first of all, decide a path, find a competent guru, 
find a competent path commit yourself to it that even if i die i'm sticking with this find a way to do at least 3 hours every day it has to come from 2 to at least 2 to 3 hours if it is not at least 2 to 3 hours a day you're progressing but you're progressing at a snail pace i understand it's very difficult but if you can watch movies and stuff and you can watch netflix you can find 3 hours to do sadhana you know so and sadhana to build shakti find what resonates with you i don't give prescriptions like that find what resonates with you and then find the particular temple and the particular devta that has the most impact on you and then grab on to that grab on to that and develop yourself understanding this is where my power flows from this is where the uh, you know the the shakti comes to me and transforms me you'll get i'm not saying don't go to other temples please don't misunderstand me go to all the temples you can because all temples have certain setting certain value you can develop a lot but you must have a relationship with a particular deva in a particular temple then matters begin to to roll faster that doesn't mean that you disrespect other temples and you disrespect other devas no don't be foolish like that but you must have that lots of hindu families now in search of the kula devata some of the sarpaka yes yes the loss of sarpaka or the serpent grove in kerala is a huge thing it was a cat- catastrophic thing that entire break with tradition that entire break with the guardian deities it was a terrible 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 loss but uh, uh, we can forget about that that is almost certainly gone there are a few houses where they understand its value and they trying to preserve it but in general it is gone kerala in general is gone <clears throat> so you know like I, i i would like to revive it somewhere <clears throat> i know people who have tried to take the sarpaka and recreate it in america and europe and australia it doesn't work because you don't have the you don't have the nagadevas in the ground like that you know which is so normal and natural so this is again what i'm saying this is a specific aspect because our religion was so rooted to specificity of geography when we became a larger you know and that is why we are becoming uh, people are trying to create temples with you know congregational areas we are unconsciously trying to become churches mm-hmm. which would be a complete catastrophe you know we are trying to become like churches we are talking like protestants we are talking like uh, you know like we are talking like but the sarpakao business is yes it is one of the great cultural losses of the 20th century catastrophic cultural and spiritual loss because if you had the nagadevatas on your side lot of good things would happen and the fact that now you don't have the nagadevatas you don't even know what is going on go to mannar shala in kerala go to mannar shala in kerala and see what an authentic living nagadevata is like your head will come apart you know and see another thing is that because of our english education we have forgotten the occult dimension of things we have forgotten the mystical dimension of things and our religion is completely occult and mystical i tell you one of my disciples went to a devi temple in andhra reasonably locally famous and he found one very interesting sculpture he found a sculpture of a monkey throttling a cobra okay right by the sanadhi and he asked what is this he sent the picture to me and asked me what is this and i had to tell him yeah so what we are saying is the kundalini will activate and if you don't control the monkey mind there will be problems there will be problems you know like so the meditation is very necessary along with this if you do not have a then you know both will be attacking each other the rising kundalini and the monkey mind will be attacking each other so they are warning you So even when you go into a temple, I always observe carefully what is in and around on the walls because those are all hints. Now we have lost this culture, we have lost this vidya, we have lost this knowledge, you know. So new temples are devoid of that energy. Yes, new temples are devoid of energy. On the Kula Devata, any reference points for sins neglected from sin now in Pakistan? I cannot help you because I really don't know nothing about that part of the country. 
you have to ask your those who are surviving family members you have to ask the older people what is there and then you have to try and recreate it you have to try and recreate it if you cannot recreate it exactly as it used to be you will have to try and create new temples and you will have to try and create new practices which also we have consistently done we have consistently taken our temples you know the south indian community the tamils they took karpar all the way to <laughs> all the way to singapore and malaysia <laughs> You know, I have temples for him there. Not just Murugan, no, they took Karupar also. You know? So, you know, there is a, there is a, there is a, so yeah, so, you know, this is in terms of the sadhana, you must be committed, you must be dedicated, you must have a connection to a particular deva, you must have a connection to a particular deva in a particular temple. I mean, I am offering this as a broad prescription because I see that this has, you must have one headquarters. Then you can have as many branch offices as you want. <laughs> yeah. No, I myself, yeah. Sorry. No, no, I myself have, uh, you know, personally realized this in the sense that uh, for a long time, mm. I assumed that uh, all, all for my Kuladevata is uh, Kalyana Venkataramana. Mm. In fact, the, the Venkataraman names, name comes from there. And uh, this is in a small village in, in a place called uh, Tantondri. Tantra mm. literally means uh, he thought and therefore he manifested uh, kind of mm. in mm. Tamil mm. Tantra. Mm. Mm. Now this is about 15 kilometers from uh, Karur, and I thought mm. that all forms of Narayana are the same. So I can I can worship Venkatachalapati in uh, Tirupan Tirumala or mm. uh, so. mm. I realized deeply that the only person that I can connect to, even among the uh, multiple forms of Narayana, is that Swayambu uh, Kalyana Venkataramana. There is no. <laughs> Because it is ingrained, your your previous life's karma brought you to this family, into this mm -hmm. lineage, into this, you know, lifetime after lifetime of sadhana has aligned you in that way. So, you know, why do they ask you, Gotra? Mm -hmm. Because the minute they ask you, Gotra at the temple, who is the Rishi? What all has been done over thousands of years? It is in the blood. You know, the very fact that they ask the Gotra, okay. And, you know, then sometimes the Devta is not aligned to the Gotra. So you don't get much benefit there. I have myself seen where Devi temple, unless the particular member of the royal family comes for a particular offering, the offering will not be accepted. You know, that it is that specific sometimes. Nowadays, of course, it is more and more difficult, although all this remains only in smaller temples. But what I'm saying is develop this connection, develop this connection with a deva, develop this connection with a temple, and then <clears throat> and then uh, you know, like re-establish, find your Kula Devtas, find your old guardians, help the people with the knowledge of those vidyas, how to do the puja of those un unknown devas. Now, I recently found out, after going for so many years, I found out Chidambaram actually has a sanadhi for Chitragupta, okay. you know, who, who maintains the record of karma. Yeah, of Must be the only place. Now, you know, the minute I heard there is a sanadhi to Chitragupta, and it is near Devi, it is not near Nataraja. The minute I heard that, I'm like, all right, so there is some aspect here about deleting karma about getting rid of karma, about, you know, like, so, okay, so that kind of sadhana can be done here. Very interesting. Very interesting. But it has to be Shakti sadhana because it is by Devi. It is not by Shiva. So this is how you understand these things, you know, this is how you, uh, all right. So, you know, I, I think I've spoken enough of that because, you know, specifics, how can I tell you unless I meet you and I know you and things like that. But in general, you must find the traditional methods. In general, you must find the traditional ways. You must find the traditional deva. Even though my path is integral yoga or Sri Aurobindo, smallest Hindu pant of all. <laughs> yeah, it is the smallest Hindu pant of all. But even though that is so, still the help comes from Chidambara. Still the connection comes from Chidambara. And I have gone to all the powerful Shiva temples in Tamil Nadu and Kerala. And I have benefited greatly from all of them. I have drawn Shakti from all of them. But my personal 
uh, whatever happens to me, you will always be Chidambara. You know, and you must develop yourself until you come to that point where a Devta in a particular temple puts his hand out and says, you are mine. When that happens, then there is hope. You know, when a Devta says, you are mine, that is a very rare thing, by the way. It is a very, very rare thing. And so, you know, Ramesh also found out. That, <laughs> and try and go at least once a year. Try and yeah, take your family absolutely. at least once a year. Develop that connection. Deepen that connection. Help the temple. Help the people who maintain the temple. Participate in the pujas. Learn what is done. Deepen your sadhana. You know, like... Make the effort. I am saying we have to learn to do hard things. We have got into the habit of being comfortable and I am afraid comfort days are over. Trouble is coming for you. Absolutely. I think trouble, yeah. trouble is already on the door. Trouble the is door. already. It's on your head. You are not aware of it. You are drunk on election victories. You are passed out on the road, drunk with election victory, and you can't see what is going to rumble over you. We are worried. Our people are worried about 2024, whereas the other side is playing the longest long game so beautifully. Yes, long game. When did the long game start? Let me give a yeah. perspective in in uh, on uh, Shatrubhan. You know, yeah. like when the uh, Europeans discovered India and they started sending missionaries. There is a very famous book which those jokers Motilal Banarasi does print <laughs> because it is out of <laughs> manners and customs of the Hindu people by uh, the Abbe Dubois. Dubois, yeah, correct. Yeah, you know, he was a French Catholic priest. He came to India and he pretended to be a Hindu sadhu. He dressed mm. like them, he learned from them, he learned the local language, he learned Telugu and Tamil, he learned Sanskrit. And, you know, and then at, at the end of about 30, 35 years, he wrote this magnum opus, which is a very useful snapshot of the social, with, take it right. with big pinch of salt, because he's an enemy and he's a foreigner, so he doesn't understand. But still, it is a very useful snapshot of about, about 400 years back. And you know what he said over there? He ended up with exam abuse and gullies of Hindus, and he said that these people will never be saved devilish idolaters, yevo. and he identified three major reasons for that. He said because they have respect for the Brahmins, mm -hmm. for the spiritual teachers. Then he said uh, their caste system, they will never give up their caste system. And then he said that they love their epics too much. And he made the specific, he made the specific uh, point that when they tried to impress, because this had worked in other countries, when they tried to impress the natives, we are the natives, you know, the uncultured, uncouth people, the with uh, stories of, uh, with stories of uh, Samson, mighty Samson, you know, the fellow who bought the temple down on the Philippines, the Indians would laugh and say, Are Hanuman ka naam suna hai, Bhima ka naam suna hai. <laughs> so, <laughs> So he identified the Indian love for epics, the Indian social structure, which is manifested in the Varnajati system, and the respect for Brahmins. And what have the missionaries been doing for the past 300 years except at attacking these three? All the attacks, even today, are on this caste atrocity narratives, demeaning of our sacred figures from our epics, abusing Brahmins. What else have we been doing? Unka Shatru Bodha. We are not even aware that such a book has been written. And that this book has become a foundational pillar of the attack upon our culture. Then there was another joker, some Italian with some name in N, who did the same thing wandering around in Madurai, saying he's a white <clears throat> Brahmin. And, and this particular he's, not a, he's not even a chandala, you know, like I mean, <laughs> what level of what level of deceit do you have to carry in your soul and your mind? How can you insult another religion by doing a thing like this? I mean, I wouldn't go to Rome and dress up as a Padri and say that I'm an Indian Christian. Yeah? It would never occur to me. I would be ashamed to even think like that. But these people have no shame. Yeah, they have no shame. 
these people are completely no shame they are evil people and why are they doing this out of the compassion of their heart because we are apparently going to be barbecued for eternity you know hellfire se bachane they are going to save us from hellfire and and this uh, this uh, dubo character also includes uh, <laughs> yeah correct correct somebody has given the name the noble uh, no i just typed it in because uh, yeah. and and in, in fact uh, the uh, this dubo character actually spends two chapters where he goes around goes on a tirade against brahmins i mean yes yes chapters. absolutely yeah. <laughs> they identified these are the pillars holding up hindu society hindu society cannot be demoralized and destroyed unless these pillars are destroyed so दिन ब दिन गाली दो एपिक्स को रामायण महाभारत को गाली दो जाति वर्णा को गाली दो मेकअप मैन्युफैक्चर एट्रोसिटी नैरेटिव यू नो लाइक इट इज अनबिलीवेबल दैट लेवल ऑफ रैंकर एंड हेट्रेड टूवर्ड्स अस एंड देन ब्राह्मण्स को गाली दो यू नो एंड इट हैज बिकम सो द पॉइंट इज हाउ सक्सेसफुल दैट होल इट टुक देम 300 इयर्स बट दीस एटीट्यूड्स हैव नाउ बीन नॉर्मलाइज्ड amongst the english educated brahmins are like uh, uh, oh brahmins brahmins did this brahmins did that brahmins you, you, prevented you, you, even if somebody else does it they'll call yeah. it brahmanical tyranny yes yes become, brahmanical yeah. tyranny patriarchy all the usual woke or shit and see the deeper question to all it's our parents generation's fault and the generation before them why does it take only one semester for a hindu youngster to be completely corrupted and ruined beyond redemption one semester in a liberal arts college whether in india or abroad one semester and they have multiple uh, hair dyes and they have multiple piercings and they are now gender fluid and you know they are part of a patriarchal tyrannical oppressive structure how shallow is your culture that it cannot withstand brainwashing of just one semester you know and our parents made a big mistake by telling us always respect the teacher whatever the teacher says you must are gurukul mein alag baat thi these are evil people these are rascals sitting in these so called institutions of you know something like ashoka university is an entire brainwashing institution ashoka jnu ju amu these are not centers of education these are centers of indoctrination absolutely and we don't care and we don't have the courage critical thinking and independent thinking are discouraged because if my child thinks critically and independently he might go and get married out of caste oh my god what will happen then we we'll lose out on the dowry and then all our family members will whisper you know and they'll say oh you know and these foolish these foolish attitudes these and the complete lack of any cultural upbringing at home people children are not taken to temples children are not made to participate in puja paath havan this that and the other i mean come on my side is woke elders are woke yeah that's good because now the younger generation is revolting against the elder woke so you know that is just a matter of like always generation gap the youngsters want to do opposite to the parents so, you know, it's like facebook is now for the parents and the youngsters are all going to instagram and instagram yeah. yeah you know so that's that's good yeah yeah and they and we get spoiled for wasting time of course sadhana is for after retirement don't you know Yeah, focus on uh, yeah focus on your studies now and then getting a good job and then getting married and then having children and then getting them into a good institution and then getting them into a good job and then getting them married and them having children and then you can do some sadhana you know I, in in my life i have never heard anything more idiotic than this plan you know <laughs> it's not it's not a plan i think it's an extended uh, one of the biggest uh, problems with in in indo society is the refusal of elders to get into vanaprastha they continue in grasta ashram dharma forever so i am not going to disagree <laughs> 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 i am not going to disagree you know there is a what i call vampiric love you know where they love so much that all the life blood is drained out of the you know like they can't let go they can't let the younger generation grow up and become adults 
and you know like so yeah that vampiric love unfortunately is very much there it can't be helped <laughs> but things are changing slowly 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 i mean any time i make a post on family dynamics it horrifies me yeah. the kind of pain and trauma that people are suffering you know it just horrifies me okay so to come back to this notion of see in one sense i am saying that the logical step to follow after becoming aware of shatru bodh is sadhana mm. you know that the way to respond because see we have not let us be clear as a society we have failed we have not created institutions to counter uh, these narratives individuals are there you know rajiv malhotra is there vikram sampath is there meenakshi jain is there now we have uh, subramanian swami is still there may heaven be praised for that you know we have uh, jay sai deepak but you cannot keep depending on exceptional individuals you need an infrastructure in place you need an ecosystem in place sanjay dikshit after a lifetime in the ias has come out and now he's fighting the very organization that he served <laughs> which is which is totally rare by the way <laughs> yeah. so you know like but again the peterson talk on his podcast it got uh, i think also because of the length it's two hours it has got about 31000 views which is not bad but the average views he gets are between 60 to 100000 yeah 60. so by that measure it is a great failure you know and i'm very upset about that but take care you know we did i wanted a formal record i wanted a formal protest hindu society did not allow this to pass Hindu society did not do its usual ostrich act and pretend this never happened. We gave a formal answer and we also extended an invitation. Please come and talk to us. We'll tell you the truth on these matters. And I also offered ki aap kuch, I'll take you to Chidambaram and make you take off your shirt, which was like one of the great problems that apparently for Mangalwadi being made to take off your shirt in the temple is a huge problem, you know. So I told Peterson, I'll explain to you the rationale behind it. You please come. <laughs> it is very clear that all political parties are appeasing adharmis my question is what should we do to get indian polity to... that's what we are talking hegde that's yeah. what we are talking sir and you're saying that don't de- don't depend don't on de- politics yeah, don't depend on politics that's what we are talking we are saying you develop your personal shakti and you become a person of influence in your see we have this insane situation now where the larger public has woken up especially after the nupur sharma and the udaipur incidents so the larger public are now they cannot any longer pretend that all religions are the same because it is pretty evident that all religions are not the same they cannot pretend that all religions are living in bhaichara and goberjula with tezab and you know all those so all these brainwashing phrases you know uh, uh, sarva dharma samabhava which actually uh, sarva, uh, you know sarva dharma vada pava you know things wow. like you know <laughs> or sarva pada samabhava you know like that's rather rude but <laughs> but you know like or uh, all religions are same and equal which is ours no they are not some religions are manifestly un- inferior and they should be called out as being inferior and perhaps even barbaric you know and uh, then this uh, gobar gulabi tazib the ganga jamuna tazib what ganga jamuna tazib nonsense yeah. so these are if we fall prey to such simple slogans such simple methodologies of brainwashing are enough to leave us helpless and defenseless please understand all these things are designed to leave you helpless and defenseless so that when the enemy comes for you you believe that a friend is coming when it is actually an enemy and then you know what happened to the tailor in udaipur what is what's going to happen to you and then the pharmacist uh, yeah absolutely yeah you do not understand the dire nature of what is upon you i, I you think simply the, don't uh, see it yeah yes yeah, th- this 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 question again and again of whether we should participate in politics and I, i think the fundamental issue that you know uh, f- for example the hindu dharma does not make a difference between the uh, in the inner experience and the external manifestation of the uh, could i could i in- interject please ramesh yeah, yeah yes. could i interject about this yeah 
I am not saying don't participate in politics, but do not think that politics are the only thing needed. That is what we are doing. Absolutely. We seem to think as of having participated in politics or having voted, therefore nothing further needs to be done. We outsource all our desires, hopes and aspirations to a bunch of people who don't care about anything except getting into the seat of power. And they don't. And we are outsourcing our existence into the hands of people who don't care. They are not good people. They are not decent people. They have a talent at getting you to vote for them. That's their only talent. Correct. Why are you putting your entire existence into the hands of rank strangers and then getting so upset when legitimate criticism is given their way? As if your grandfather was abused? This is completely, uh, you know, like lack of thought power Sri Aurobindo spoke about. We have become 100 times worse than his day. You cannot, you cannot put all your eggs into the political basket. I am saying organize local communities. Find out who are the people in the local community, who are your friends, who will come to help you when there is trouble like this. Organize at a local level. Speak up. How many people have told me that because they posted we support Nupur Sharma or because they said something, their family gets agitated and fearful and take it off, take it off, there will be trouble. The trouble is already upon you. You're taking it off is not going to change anything. Absolutely. You don't seem to be able to recognize when something is hurtling towards you. That is completely like the terminator. It is not amenable to reason. It is not amenable to, you know, to basic levels of human decency. Here is a very frightening quote about this whole situation. It's about the concept of othering and how, you know, like uh, the here. This is from a book called "Facing Violence: Preparing for the Unexpected." The book's name is Facing Violence, Preparing for the Unexpected, Rory Miller. The predator has already othered you to a sufficient extent that any communication that relies on a shared feeling of humanity will be ineffective. The threat does not see you as the same species. Yeah, I can't be clearer than that. Is it? Yeah. I'm not going to give details as to who is the threat and what. All of you, samajdar ko ishara kafi hai, word to the wise is enough. This is what you are up against. We are up against the predator from the Schwarzenegger movie and in the end only Schwarzenegger escaped. The rest of his team all got wiped out. Even though there are many bombastic, if it bleeds, we can kill it. Yes, in the end, only he got out. So, you know, like participate in politics 100%. We should participate in politics and we should hold our elected representatives accountable. We didn't vote for you to do all this swanking around, all this poncing around. We didn't, uh, you know... Uh, elect you so that you could go and pander to other people. We didn't elect you so that you could take our money and start giving it away to other people. And nobody is willing to do all these things because the act of selecting the leader seems to be enough for most people. It seems to satisfy some emotional need in them that, oh, we have done our dharma. We are now all karma yogis, you know. And <laughs> no karma yogis have come out of politics, trust me. They never will. If there was any chance of that person becoming any kind of yogi, he's ruined the minute he goes into politics. And I'm saying don't make politics the center of your existence. And that is what I'm seeing, that people are only getting agitated over political issues, spiritual issues, cultural issues, loss of heritage, loss of culture, loss of transmission. These things are... You cannot live like this. And the reason why anybody even listens to me is precisely because I have developed myself to a certain extent where my words have some influence, my, my words have some power. Each one of you must become like that. I can influence thousands, you can influence hundreds. Even 10 people, if you influence, that's 10 people who are not enemies. 
Please understand, anybody who is not on the Hindu side is an enemy. There are no neutrals here. And I don't think you see, you guys seem to get this. Yeah, the, I, I think what has happened is that you know may, many people have uh, ego invested in one uh, one man. I mean, let's be uh, quite uh, and and because they've ego invested, they 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 refuse to accept that uh, you know this that they've invested in the wrong person. We tried that one hundred years back, no? We tried that yeah. one hundred years back. Infallible leader of supreme wisdom. How did that turn out? How did that work out for us? And when I point this out, people get all agitated. Yeah. You cannot progress as a society by outsourcing your intelligence and your uh, reasoning faculty to some poorly educated people who only care about getting elected. This is, uh, anyways, is there a link between soft pillow attitude of the majority of Hindus and the missing sadhana connected with Kuladeta? Absolutely. Absolutely. The lack Absolutely. of Shakti, the lack of Shakti is the primary reason for softness. Even Tamil Shaivism, which is very Satvik, but when the Satvik people become Ugra, Ramesh made the comment only today, when the Satvik people will become Ugra, there is a, you know, that nothing can stand in its way. This softness, this softness is completely connected to weakness, lack of Shakti, 100%. And Swamiji used to always say, build strength, build strength, build strength. The only word that here from the Upanishads is strength. I have never preached anything but strength. You will be closer to heaven by reading, by playing football than and building your muscles <laughs> than by reading the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, and, and, and and he was not uh, averse to actually shaking people up even physically, like you like. Yes, absolutely. That, 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 during that voyage, very. Uh, yeah, yeah. He picked up the missionary and dangled him <laughs> in the what over the edge of the yeah. ship. You know, if you keep abusing my religion, I'll drop you into the ocean. Right. You know, and so. Absolutely. Uh, this this lack of sadhana is combined with lack of physical strength. So yeah. these things go together. You know, you need to develop shakti and you need to develop some physical strength. You best service you can do to your children is to get them into a proper fighting martial arts school, krav maga, jujitsu, MMA, not nonsense like kung fu and karate and all that, which are just. Uh, Places Whatever where they know there. actually how to fight. Get them there. Teach them. Make the effort to teach them that thing. You also learn how to fight. Find out who are, you know, develop links with your community so that if any trouble happens, you are not alone to face it. But the larger point is correct. It is because of lack of Shakti. Shakti ka abhav is liye hai sadhana ka abhav hai. Sadhana ka abhav is liye hai kyunki culture ka hi abhav hai na. Nahi to the culture was part of the, you know, people don't do the daily nitya pujas that they were supposed to do, which was just taken for granted in the past. Nobody would leave the nitya pujas, but today, you know, oh, we don't yeah. have time for that. Don't have time for that. At, at, at least, at, yeah, sorry. No, at least some basic level, uh, I mean, there, is, there is no excuse to not do basic level uh, puja at all. I mean, it doesn't take uh, that much basic time. Basic level right? puja se ab kaam nahi chalega. You need to do uh -huh. real solid Ugra Devta pujas. You know, we need to <laughs> bring about Zalutratha no, everywhere. Even that basic level puja, hardly anyone is doing. I mean, they just... Yes, because Netflix is more important than your sadhana, <laughs> no? <laughs> you know, like the, the kind of... See, there was a movie recently with Mohan Lal called Twelfth Man. I don't know, some people may have seen it, you know, and I was appalled by that movie because it's a murder mystery. It's like an Agatha Christie locked room murder mystery. And all the people in that, with the exception of Mohan Lal, all the people in that, they are young people in their late 20s, early 30s, all married, one couple about to get married. 
they are horrible human beings. And I'm like, is this an accurate representation of young people today? Because if it is, then I don't want to be these kind of people. You know? They are people with, they are barbarians. You know, they are people with no morality, with no ethics, nothing but an eat, drink, fornicate mindset. You know, and we are putting this eat, drink, fornicate, take selfies and put up on Facebook and Instagram as some sort of uh, success in life. And this won't do. You know, like, <sighs> anyways, that is a, it's a question for each, each individual person. But I was really shocked to see that movie. And I was like, I don't want to believe it is true. But, you know, it could be. I don't want to believe that this is what young, educated people are like today. Because if that is so, then I don't want to be part of it. I don't want to be a Malayali if that is Malayali culture today. You know? And I, I sincerely hope that is not so. Because you cannot have... you See, what is your cultural legacy? What is your knowledge of your culture? What if, you know, we are in reactive mode all the time. I had asked this question once to somebody. Somebody said, why is it so difficult? Why are Hindu young people so easily corrupted and swayed? And I said, all right. In your life, have your parents or anybody ever told you why it is better to be a Hindu than to be any other? The person acted like I had stabbed him with a spear. I said, why should you be a Hindu? Have you ever asked that question? Has anybody explained that to you? Has anybody told you what is good about being a Hindu? I, I think uh, we face this on a daily basis, even for example, uh, I, I face it at, my, at home, even my own daughter, you know, because I, I keep talking to her about all of these things. She sees, she sees the dichotomy of uh, what is taught to her at school, you know. Uh, yes, yes. She, she came back to me and was saying, uh, you said this and they seem to be saying this. It, it had to be <laughs> Then I said, no, but uh, sometimes you, you feel sad because sometimes you tell them only for the exam you, you say that, but the, the truth is this, which is which is a very, very no, sad... No, I think, I, think, I think we should forget that. I, should, I think we should forget yeah. that these teachers are a bunch of good people. They are not. They are a bunch yeah, of no. evil people. Maybe they became evil because their profession made them evil. But teachers today, especially in the liberal institutions, are just evil degenerates, and I don't mind saying it. I'm saying it openly. Liberal, any any course that ends with study is a degeneracy course. Any course that ends with the word studies at the end of it is a, a course for degeneracy. And they are not good people. They are evil people. They are brainwashed people. And they are, they are pumping there. So you must tell your children that this is for the exam. This is for society. But this is not reality. I think we must create a rather healthy contempt for teachers in the minds of the next generation. I don't see any other way. This innate, instinctive, automatic respect for teachers has brought us to this problem. Because they stand up and say things and the uh, young children believe that, you know, it's the teacher, so they must know better and they are correct in the matter. No, they are not good people. They're not, they're not good. They are not good people. <laughs> you know, and uh, yes, Sri Vidya Upasana helps most definitely. Any Shakti path, any Shakti method, in fact, deeply helps. I'm not saying only Shakti methods help, but I'm saying take up something. Experience what it means to feel that Prana Shakti is building in you. Experience what it means that your mind is clearing, that your karmic patterns are slowing down or stopping or altering. Experience what it means to live from a higher consciousness and then see what happens to you. Because what you are doing today is just... Uh, you have ingested all this poison from the media and entertainment and you are living your life by those norms, which are utter uh, garbage. You are eating garbage, you are thinking garbage and what comes out of you is therefore garbage. How you live is also therefore a very rubbish bin way of living. You know That won't do. And I'm saying it is now, we have tried the societal methodology, we have tried the educational and they're all failing. So I'm saying we must start from the core of existence, which is the individual human life. 
the individual human life is where uh, the transformation happens the you know hindu dharma is one person at a time whenever we have tried this collective thing it inevitably collapses and ends up into being anti hindu secular movement whenever we have tried this coll collective movement uh, to it inevitably ends up being an anti hindu secular movement so you know i want enough individuals who have the strength of character to resist when an organization is leaving the path of dharma and going into avidya and adharma agyana vimohita types they are becoming and i want individuals with the character the moral character to resist that and say no this is adharma we are not going there we are not going to go with you and they're not even teaching logic the everything is theoretical and diversity is mugging up yes that is a larger question about the but about the, the education but, but that is the lesson of the two evils i mean they are uh, you know they are, they are taught absolutely uh, wrong things about uh, culture about all of these things which are yeah. the biggest bigger, bigger issues that we yeah aim is not to develop long term institutions which should be the aim correct we need something like ashoka university from a dharmic perspective but our rich people do not seem to care our rich people take great pride in saying we built a temple they no longer are uh, not in a temple in a hospital or an it park they no longer have any pride in saying we built a temple why don't they why don't four or five really rich hindus come together billionaires we have so many of them now why don't they come together and say all right we are building a dharmic institution where hinduism and indian culture will not be bashed we will be open to all from the world even that much is too much to ask apparently yeah and most of the corporate uh, honchos today are investing in uh, if, if it's media they investing in the wire or the quint or the, those kind yeah, of yeah they 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 and look they are the product of the education system the educational right. system has brainwashed them you know and we don't have the guts to say that is a anti hindu attitude we are so reluctant to tell somebody what you are saying is anti hindu what you are saying comes from hatred for hindus and we need to develop that ability to say that in public to whenever that happens we need to stand up and say no this is coming from hatred of hindus and we are not going to allow it new york times or i don't know which one of them time or somebody a panic stricken article hindu lives matter this is a dangerous trend because suddenly now narrative is shifting you know because reality is now breaking through the narratives blood soaked reality is breaking through the narratives so they are trying to reconstruct so you know like i don't want to see do not i i i know this this might all sound very depressing but let me say i am not depressed i am angry I do not believe in politicians I do not believe in the institutions but I have not lost faith in the devtas I have not lost faith in the culture I have not lost faith in Bharat's ability to renew and regenerate itself whenever we seem to come to an utter dire conclusion something or the other happens and there is a whole wave of rejuvenation I have not lost faith in that that is why i am stressing on individual sadhana if 100 people if 100 people come to a certain level of spirituality in at least one geographical area there will be an upheaval of consciousness let me read something that shri arabindo had said let me read something i mean it's very nice that this came up organically he had said uh, one minute let me look at all right here we go the spiritual power of the true brahmin is the chief result of sattva the prowess of the kshatriya is the foundation of spiritual power from pan spiritual power when it receives a blow sparks of the prowess of the kshatriya fly in all directions everything catches fire as it were spiritual power cannot survive where there is no kshatra prowess spiritual power cannot survive where there is no kshatra prowess if there is one true brahman in the land he can create 100 kshatriyas the cause of the downfall of this country is not an excess of sattva but want of rajas and a preponderance of tamas there you have it there you have it yeah this is absolutely hitting the nail on the head yeah see i'm 
I am not claiming to be some kind of great spiritual master or anything, but just I know the difference between what I said before certain spiritual things happened to me and what I can say today. Even if many people may oppose, many people also listen. I have created a space where there are receptive minds. I have created a space in my life, at least 1,000 people over the last 10 years. I've been a guru for exactly 10 years now. This year is the, you know, I've been a guru for 10 years. At least 1,000 people have individually told me that I have transformed their lives, that I have saved them from being secular and an enemy of dharma. So that's 1,000 people who are not our enemies. And why did they listen to me? Because I'm articulate and persuasive? Not at all. Because they can sense something behind the articulation and the persuasiveness. They can sense an authenticity. They can sense a truth. They can sense Shakti. And that I want all of you to be like that. I don't want you to say, Sri Guru Hana. What is that? Sri Guru Buddha is 57. All right, I'll be around for another 30, 40 years, fine. But that, that won't do. We need younger people. We need hot blood. We need more people like that. We need people who just by the fact that they exist becomes an exemplar. See, Vivekananda is another level. He was a vibhuti. He was a vibhuti of Shiva. So, you know, wherever he walked in, he was supreme. There was, he was just such an overwhelming personality. Everybody knew he was the best. No, no matter which room, which area he was in, everybody knew this is the most uh, evolved man in our midst. That is different. I'm not saying that I'm anything like that. But I'm saying I would like, I would like our people also to, you know, my, my two-word formula for become undeniable, become undeniable, become undeniable. And you cannot become undeniable with merely with social structures. By making money, by doing something, that is fine. But if your words and your, if your transformative ability is needed, there must be Shakti. And Shakti without sadhana does not happen. Very, very interesting. Aurobindo says something, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm, I'm probably paraphrasing here, where he says that unparalleled uh, evil has to be met with determined force. And this determined force comes from uh, individual Shakti. <laughs> the, the life energy starts with the individual. The life energy does not start with the collective. We for 100 years have been trying collective solutions. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work at all. We need to create enough awakened people. We need to create enough people with Shakti so that there is a, a, a certain, uh, you know, like, See, things are not so bad. When I was a child, 50 years back or 40 years back, to be a Hindu Tovadi was to be regarded as the most untouchable type of human being in existence. Today, Hindu Tovadi is mainstream. So to that extent, we have changed the consciousness of the country. Correct. You know, Hindu, uh, you know, Ram Janma Bhumi kabhi nahi hoga. I have been told by so many older people and I said, in my life, I will see Ram Janma Bhumi. You know, I started my career of act active predictions because I attended a meeting of the VHP in Calcutta before, uh, and they were all riled up about the whole Ramjan Mahumi issue. And, and I came back and I said that the illegal structure built on usurp land is not going to last very long. And they said, what? What are you talking about? I said, you don't understand. It has been removed from here. And if something is removed from here, then it will not last long in the material world. Everything first has to manifest in the astral and the mental, and then only it can last in the material world. And if something is removed from the mental, it, it won't last long in the material world. Of course, it happened, and everybody was shocked. And they're like, oh, he has Trikala Drishti. And I'm like, no, I just have basic understanding. So you know, like the fact that today now, of course, the establishment and the government is doing everything possible to hamper and stifle uh, Kashi Vishwanath and Krishna Janmabhumi, but those will also happen. Yes. Because Hindu society is very determined ki wo hoga. And the number one thing that Hindu society must do is free our temples from these rapacious, greedy, nonsensical Sarkari boards. 
if there is any diabolical organization it is these temple organizations these so called sarkari organizations controlling the temples they must be all dissolved and the people who work over there cases must be filed on them for theft absolutely you know these are these are unacceptable this is completely unacceptable that the money that we give as bhaktas is being used for government projects the government taxes the public use that or use the other the other communities that you have not taxed for 70 years start taxing them now for 70 years yeah. no either you tax everybody or you let our temples go they will never dare to touch those other communities they will not dare to touch the the church and the mosque so get out of the temples also now these people are making some plans to have a grand board and all that which is just going to be uh -huh. hrc in another form it is going to be controlled in another form that is not acceptable but i am telling you that will also happen that will also happen our temples will be free and if our temples are free then we can do the hospitals we can do the schools we can do the universities we can start creating the businesses we are not able to function as a society because our community resources are strangled and being stolen just uh... just to add to this uh, you know uh, some of the some, some people might know that i have a three part uh, article in the fourth part uh, fourth article is already there which is called the secular loot of hindu temples where yeah. i i simply do a, a little bit of google search and identify what are the uh, you know temp, what has been looted from some of our temples yes and through that itself i have been able to compile about four parts each one running into several thousand words but oh, they are not ashamed right. of it they are not hiding it they are doing it openly <laughs> doing it openly and, and just the funds that have uh, that, collect, that that come to uh, that that, uh, that come to tiruma tirupati would be enough to uh, take care of every other temple that that currently is na, you know does not have funds to do nitya puja there are several temples that do not have money to do in puja for the deva De devi or devata see deva. i'll say something i'll say something invaders have always destroyed temples and stop pujas because they know that if the devta gets puja the devta gives shakti to the worshipers so this is also another plan to deny shakti to the worshipers by not allowing nitya puja i don't care people may get upset about this statement of mine i'm saying it i'm saying it bluntly the 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 secular establishment is not a friend of hindus and the sooner we accept that the sooner we accept that and the sooner we make it impossible for these people to continue in this manner but we just seem to be living and then there are the usual things that they will the higher caste will prevent lower caste from coming in this is all horseshit and garbage you know this is just absolute gaslighting in tamil nadu there are 39000 temples only one third of them are brahmin pujaris oh, by yeah. the by the rule of the parampara of the temple by the legacy and the the ritual rules of the temple uh, nobody other than the designated caste can be a priest in those temples two thirds of the temples are run by non brahmin priests and still brahmins are being bashed there, there should be a limit to this you know? there should be a limit to this okay reading epics at home not in a perfunctory way but in the puja space kids will come and hear themselves they will ask they will want to know more yes hemant is correct we have to invest in the next generation over next 20 years that is the only way to go about doing daily puja at home and oneself doing prioritizing sadhana is the best thing one can do for future generation children learn from example yes we made exactly this point at the beginning of the Sri Guru Ji, please take the responsibility for enlightening us about why being Hindu is good. Any other religion on Facebook post so that we can pass it on to our children. See, here we go again. You are again shifting <laughs> the responsibility onto the yeah. savior, the savior figure. Of course, I can do it, and I will do it. But uh, do you think that as a parent and as a Hindu, you need to find that answer by yourself? Do you think? that you need to think about this and come up with an answer it might not be a very good answer but it will be an authentic answer because it is your answer so i am asking all of you who is viewing this currently why don't you think about this why is it good to be a hindu and not a non hindu 
Why is it better to be a Hindu and not a non-Hindu? What do you think? Why? What do you feel? Or don't you think so? Because in that uh, statement, I am sorry to say, uh, in that statement, I am sorry to say there is a, a small uh, lack of confidence. And there is a, a, a very bad habit, which is shifting personal responsibility to a, a, an assigned savior figure. Of course, I can answer that. But I want you see, the whole point of this talk is not so that I give you instructions. I remember a young friend of mine. He's not a disciple. He's a friend. He said, uh, why don't you create one group? We will all join. I'll get other people to join. And then you tell us what to think about society and politics. And I just, <laughs> I just, I just, I said, my whole life is about making people individually responsible, thinking for yourself, acting from place of authenticity. And you're telling me to create a cult? And he was like, no, but we don't have time no, because we go to work and we can't think deeply about these things. And so why don't you do it? I said, how long before I become corrupt with that kind of power? How long before you become corrupt because you have stopped using your mind? It was a very shocking conversation to me. I said, you have no idea who you're talking to, evidently. No? You know, I, I, I just got, I just got so again, you know, saying that, saying that, you know, please, Sri Guru, you have to think, you have to realize, okay, this is what I need to do. You know, like, why Why is it such a difficult question, by the way? Why is it such a difficult question? This surprises me. You are part of a religion. You are all here because you love your religion. You are proud of your religion. You are afraid that your religion is under threat. Then why is it difficult for you to articulate why you think religion is good and you should be in your religion and not any other religion? I, I think the uh, one of the reasons, for, for, for example, uh, you know, I, I've seen this uh, in, in, in many places. I think Sai, J, JST also spoke about it. Even today, I see people who will come to the, uh, who will uh, do puja at home, have a tilak or a, you know, or a vibhuti on their forehead. At the moment mm. they enter, they will quickly take their uh, cloth or they, they'll wipe it off. As if, uh, you know, uh, sitting in their offices with those marks of, uh, uh, is somehow, you know, insulting. Whereas, you will find people, uh, you know, wearing those fest caps or anything with absolute mm. pride. And, and, I, and I've been personally, you know, I've seen, I, I'll, I'll give this example uh, in, in, in an organization that I was with before I quit that organization. The, the, there was a, a, a British, uh, you know, uh, educated Muslim who used to excuse himself every time at, at 12 noon at 6 p.m. in the evening because we used to do real stretch hours there because we were building uh, we were working uh, u.s time europe time and he used to go to you know take his mat go to the terrace and do his namaz and come back nobody protested even if there was a project meeting happening he used to go and do this nobody projected uh, protested then one day one of the uh, uh, young hindu boy came dressed in a in a black dhoti and you know wear, wearing that it was the sabrimala season he came and he had a tilak the hr person called him and said these things cannot happen in this office you don't have to uh, you know show your uh, religiosity here his words and and he said and this person said no no this is how uh, you have to dress if you have to go to sabrimala and all that and he said no you, you can uh, carry a small kerchief that is black in color. That will do. Uh, Hinduism is not about all of these things. I was there because this boy was uh, in a part of my team. And he said, I don't want to see you like this barefoot and, you know, uh, dressed like this from tomorrow. Uh, you, you take, you make a, you make a choice. You can either continue here or you can uh, do this. And, and the poor Why, why was the case, why was the police complaint not filed on oppressing uh, religious practice? File two cases like this on an HR person, you know. Like HR, have been done. Yeah. You know, HR is like the most morally degenerate uh, profession in the universe. I, I I don't care if people get upset. You know, like if I hear that somebody is an HR, no, I kind of like uh, <laughs> okay, bad person. You know, like yeah. 
this, you see, we do not fight back. Did anybody point out that the Muslim person is being allowed to do namaz and my religious practices are being interfered with? I, I was the only person who uh, spoke up. And, and, and for what, which... Uh, what, and you were reprimanded. I was, I, I was reprimanded. I fought, and uh, six months down the road, I actually quit the organization. I'm saying this now. So, case should have been filed. Case hmm. should have been filed under 295A. You know, once three organizations get cases filed on 295A, they will organize bhajan competitions in the office. <laughs> you know, case should have been filed. See, we don't we don't push back. We don't push and, back. No, the, the boy himself, was, uh, you know, was very apologetic. He was saying, "Don't." Uh, he, he was advising me not to push. I mean, that that is the because he was so scared. He wanted the job. My, yes, I understand. Boy. You know that that is the you know if you say these things, you will lose your job. But you know, if things go like this, there will not only be no there job, will be no, there will absolutely. be no existence. Existence itself. Absolutely. Yeah. So okay, here we go. If I say okay. I'm in love with a guy from another religion, I don't know what to answer. If you think, tell him to convert to Hinduism, no, ghar wapasi yeah. karo uska. Again, again, right. again, again, this question is being asked from a place of inferiority. Again, this question is being asked from a place of inferiority. First of all, why is the daughter in love with a guy like that? Don't they read what happens to girls who fall into those kind of traps? And, and you, people should read yeah, Somebody has already said it. <laughs> Please ask your daughter to take the guy to Padmanavi Swami temple. <laughs> Varaswami temple. Okay, Varaswami. even better. Varaswami. Yes, yes, absolutely. Murli Krishna, bravo. <laughs> Perfect ask him to prostrate there, she will understand. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and absolutely. Uh, to, and specifically to answer this question, I think See, must I, I'm to, sure, I'm sure never ever, never ever anybody has given this response back. Tell him to convert. Hmm. Yeah, I, because that I, is I our brainwashing. That, that is our brainwashing. You know, and I'm like, and, yeah, and, let and, him uh, people, and, people, should, and people should read uh, Dr. S. L. Bhairappa's book, Avarna, just yes, to understand yes, what absolutely. happens. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 See, again, these questions are so interesting to me because they reveal the conditioning is so deep-seated. Even people who want to overcome it are still helpless. <laughs> even people who want to fight this, even people who, you know, they still go on this. Look, forget about being fair. Forget about being nice. Those days are over. All this all these delusions about mutual tolerance and respect. They don't exist. It is all one way. It is only from our side. Now, so... <laughs> the Varaswami temple I found... <laughs> I found that to be a, a really good answer. <laughs> I found that to be a really good answer. <laughs> again, again, it comes from regarding our the value of our religion as less. Even if they don't regard it as less, they regard it as equal, which is wrong. Our religion's value is more. Mm. And I don't see any reason why we should not say that, because that's what they all say. They all say that our religions are true, and you are benighted idolaters who are going to burn in hellfire and things like that. Our religion is more valuable and we should not have any problem saying that. I don't have. You know, like people feel you can see them collapse, you know, like air is vacuumed out of a tin the minute you ask them to say something assertive about their own religion in public. Huh? What are you asking me to do? Say something good about Sanatana Dharma. Oh God, what will happen? I'll be unfriended. I'll receive messages on what, WhatsApp saying that I'm a fanatic Hindu now. Then what will happen to me? Congratulations. We don't have enough fanatic Hindus. That is our problem. <laughs> no, but in this case, especially what you said about 
the HR person one case personally. It should not even be against the organization. It should have been personally on the HR person. You know, I actually want to create a fund or an organization for these cranky cases. You know, where any time we hear some such incident, <laughs> a group of lawyers turns up and starts moving the legal route. You know, two ninety five thop deta unke upar that this has insulted my feelings. This has insulted my religious feelings. This person is directly and diabolically interfering with my religious practice. You know, and, and we, just and go are, to two or three people. The rest immediately line pe aa jate. And we have HR departments even interfering in the uh, you know private uh, what your social media posts are. I'll, I'll give you another yes, example. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I'll give you another example. One one is that uh, one of the reasons uh, you know uh, after after I uh, became a cutter Hindu, one of the reasons I never uh, uh, never found employment was because they used to say I didn't realize this for some time. You know they used to say. Could you share your social media profiles? I used to gladly share. One look at it, and they never used to come back to me. <laughs> so I realized. No, I believe that is uh, illegal to ask. Is ask for it, but they, yeah. no. But uh, most uh, HR, uh, I don't know. I, at least I have seen. At least I have heard from people as well because I interact with quite a few. No, I think asking uh, for I job. think asking for your social media profile is like asking for your phone number in the shops when they sell you goods. They are not allowed to ask for it. But but I think several for it. several corporates and several uh, corporates are actually doing that. They're they're checking people's social media profiles, and then well, we know what happened to our young friend. No, merely because yeah. he was making posts on the Bhagavad Gita, he was told Absolutely. that you're not fit for leadership. Yeah, not, yeah, not Can you believe it? And he's and he has stopped. He has, he has yeah, disappeared. He from, stop. yeah. No, he's come back. He's not on social media, but yeah, the point is. The point is the hatred towards Hinduism is so strong, and we don't fight. So that is why I want to create an all India, pan India organizations of lawyers. Any time we face some such thing in a private organization, immediately the HR person is dragged to court. Just sheer harassment tactics, you know. Like then HR all over the country in the next usual conference in their AC, they can all decide. Okay, better not say anything against Hindu practices because we'll end up in court. And the HR person must be personally held liable. It must not be that the company is held liable. Okay. You know, like the person must be the complaint must be against the person. This person insulted my religion. This person insulted my religious practice. This person offended me religiously. Once that happens with three, four people, and again we won't do it because we are nice. We'll be blacklisted. We'll never find employment. You know, all these are the. कुछ ऐसा नहीं होता है खैर या द एफपी हैंडल ऑफ द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कल्चर इज पोस्टेड अ पिक्चर ऑफ स्वामी जी एंड मेंशन टुडे इज डे एज अ डेथ एनिवर्सरी रादर देन महासमाधि डे द डैमेज इन देयर आइडियोलॉजी सीम्स बियॉन्ड रिपेयर आई थिंक यू द बेसिक द बेसिक द बेसिक टर्मिनोलॉजी इज सेक्युलर व्हिच मींस एंटी हिंदू वो महासमाधि क्या है द यू नो द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कल्चर प्रोबब्ली डजंट नो व्हाट समाधि मींस Absolutely. You know, and what Mahasamadhi means, you know, because on ke liye to sarva garma vada pao hai na. So you know, like what these are barbarian people. You know, just because they have some positions does not mean that they are cultured. They are not cooth people. You know, they are uncouth people. I I, I remember once, <laughs> I remember once in childhood, Doordarshan, somebody wrote and the news reader read it out that Christians celebrated Good Friday with traditional gaiety. And I'm, like, are you out of your mind? Then, they, then they had to make, then they had to make an apology because you know, obviously, telephone calls and these are the days with no social media. But when somebody says a, it's obvious he doesn't know what is. Oh, it's a Christian festival. Getty ho gaye. Mm. And I actually remember this. I remember this. This is in the early days of television in India. You know, when uh, Doordarshan uh. was the only. Yeah. I, this Piyush Goel one, I think that's a, that's a going around in Twitter right now. Where he says, "But that's an old one, no? I mean, that's yeah, an, an old, old one. one. It's, it's yeah. Why doesn't he just? Since why doesn't he just do Sunnat and be done with it? Done with it, yeah. yeah. That's what no, I mean. In I fact, mean, I, yeah, he was, <laughs> he was, he was. People were trying to justify it by saying he was trying to win them over. He was trying to establish rapport. You know, like uh, offering your backside up like this." Is not to establish <laughs> rapport. 
and and the, and the moment you chant those verses you you you, con- you already converted i mean there is you are no longer well Hindu. that's the theory but you know like it must be done before a molana or something and it must be done with intent and the, it's not quite so simple as people make it out to be <laughs> yeah but if he is doing it every day then he is some new species because he is not hindu you know? yeah. if he is doing it in his puja space that is not a anyways see uh, please leave these people out of it because these people yeah, the, the, you know they they ask for hindu words they are hindu word collectors they are not a hindu party half of them are not hindus whenever i tell this people get upset but now it is becoming increasingly clear that they have been infiltrated and subverted you know the extent of crypto converts you are going to be really surprised 20 30 years from now and funerals start happening and then the religious nature of the funeral these prominent celebrities athletes politicians are hindu naam tha lekin what is happening here you are really going to people are going to be in for a huge shock let me assure you of that so please don't talk about you know again the conversation comes back to what the politicians are doing yeah, politicians I mean, are incompetent people there is yeah. the story of the kanchi paramacharya which is i mean we, yeah. we hardly we don't have any gurus like that when the, yeah. you know indra gandhi apparently came to visit him And yes he refused I, to speak to her yeah, yeah he, he, she sat in front of him and he maintained absolute silence she tried every single trick he never opened his mouth so this uh, you know his uh, assistant who you know asked him that you are not in maunavrata or anything why did you not speak said what should i speak i have no time for anyone who, do, who doesn't have time for the sanatana dharma well you know i wouldn't totally blame the gurus though i wish they would display some uh, some strength but you know what they launched the entire government machinery after the ashram yeah. after the you know they just harassed the life out of them they so did they did that to the kanchi matam yeah because they they do they do that to everybody hmm. you know they they launch they harass the life out of them so you know they they kind of like uh, if the politician wants his ego stoked with a picture then they allow that picture and they talk a little bit and then what they say in private you know and i know so you know i don't really see i'm not saying that i'm not saying that one must be foolish about these matters you know uh, a matha has larger social responsibility and a very powerful politician can create a lot of trouble you know so a matha has to be little and even even in work and everything i am saying yes i understand why people don't stand up to hr because they'll be blacklisted in that but you know there is there comes a time when you have to decide there comes a time when you have to decide whether uh, this is worth it or not because you know at this rate you will anyways be forced out eh? mm. at this rate you will anyways be forced out you know we are losing our public space we are losing the right to speak in public what is going on what basic spiritual practice one can do to become really a hindu come on that's not a serious question <laughs> that's not a serious question what is the hey, out of previous 3 to 4 generations sir? yeah well you know like you need to find you need to find a proper guru you need to find a proper traditional practice you need to find who your kula devtas are you need to find a deva and a temple and you need to start doing your sadhana i am not prescribing a two year or three year process this is not a phd program this is a lifetime and lifetimes program you know you need to buckle down and you need to and also you need to develop yourself socially you need to learn how to speak how to argue you need to develop uh, your social stature you need to develop your social circle you need to develop your circle of influence you need to be a person a valuable person you need to become a valuable person it gom fir ke it comes back develop shakti become undeniable i have only four words essentially i have only four words in a, in all these things you know develop shakti become undeniable and swami ji swami vivekananda is the greatest example of a person who is undeniable remember what he said when he met his brother disciples in that railway station 
when he was still a parivrajaka sanyasi and nobody paid any attention to him i am going away now but when i come back i shall burst upon society like a bomb and make it follow me like a dog so you know he knew what is possible when one has shakti and exactly that happened correct yeah he died in 1902 we are still talking about it and and who who, who else who else who died in 1902 are we talking about nobody talks about queen victoria anymore even though you know the age was named after her uh-huh. nobody cares you know but so there is a there is a certain there is a certain i am asking for hard work i am not asking for easy i am not giving you easy solutions i am asking for hard work from you at a social level at a mental level at an intellectual level i am asking you to pick up the burden i am asking you to shoulder the burden i am asking you to develop yourself i am asking you to become fearless swami vivekananda was very big on this also fearlessness he said that indian culture is unique in that our god is called abhi fearless again and again that one phrase is used to describe god fearless the fearless and he wanted all his followers to be fearless and i am sorry to say that we are fearful this is not yes health temples of course the core issue the core issue for hindu society is not who gets into power or whatever the core issue for hindu society should be freeing temples from government control and restoring them to the communities that should be our only goal we should you know any politician comes to you ask for votes what's your stand on temples what are you going to do about it in what time frame the core issue the core issue should be this and this alone you know i have given you the personal prescriptions but you know like at a social issue if you want to engage with a social issue this is the issue after that fixing of the educational system because the educational system is brainwashing but to fix the educational system we need funds the funds are not coming from the rich people in society but if the temples are there they will automatically take up that responsibility they will automatically take up the dharmic responsibility so you know the core issue are the temples hindu temples will be free hindu temples have to be free free safe soil yes very good safe soil is a wonderful initiative i support it completely because it is a matter of existence but you know like uh, we are here about seeing how we can save sanatana dharma also <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, yeah. particularly on the safe temples uh, the extent to which for example the, the you know in the, in the karnataka state manifesto the temp- that yeah. temples should be freed has been mentioned in the last 3 or 4 uh, uh, times that the elections have happened but nothing has happened there it's just a uh, so so called promise that that is made but it's If never uh, words are cheap words are cheap actions are priced so you know if you are getting words without deliver if you are getting votes without delivering why would you not do that absolutely why would you not do that i mean it's pretty brilliant you know you say something flippant and you know you you get to uh, enjoy for 5 6 years positions of power you know why would you not do that you know we need to be pragmatic about these things you know we just because somebody tells you something pleasing to hear just because somebody tells you something that you like to hear you make the mistake of thinking they are on your side no actions alone count words do not count what have people done correct and demolishing temples to build corridors does not count does not count at all absolutely <laughs> that does not count <laughs> secular, secular corridors that count. yeah that that does not count you know that that the price the karmic price for that we will pay one day yeah the karmic price for that we will pay one day it really bothers me sometimes but okay it happened now nothing can be done you know it shouldn't we call for a town hall meeting of the politicians these are all impractical things because again we are asking for the politicians to solve these matters 
and we have tried that for over a hundred years. The politicians are not your friends. They will not help you. They will only betray you. They will help you for a while, get your trust, confidence and your votes. And then they will sell you down the river. They will betray you. So I am saying build social structures. Create town halls in the temples. You know, if you have the good fortune to be near your ancestral temple or you have the good fortune to be near a temple where you reside, go to the temple, become part of the temple ecosystem, become part of the community there. You know, one thing that really makes me very happy when I go to Chidambaram, it's still a small town, thanks be to God. On the weekends, entire families come and they just sit in the courtyard of the temple. They're not there to listen to music. They're not watching TV, nothing. They're just coming and sitting in the temple. Because even now, that legacy, that tradition is there. They're just going and sitting in a temple is a valuable thing to do spiritually. You now they go and have the darshan and they just sit. They just sit quietly in the courtyard. It's such a wonderful thing to see and it just fills my heart with joy. You know, we don't even sit in a temple because of our population. We have created this conveyor belt manner of darshan now. You know, where the idea is to push you as far as quickly to the front and then shove you away. And then, you know, like that's because of our population. But our temples are not meant. Our temples are energy spaces and you're meant to bask in that energy. You're meant to be marinated in that energy. You should spend time in the Kshetra. You should give the Kshetra some time to work on you. You know, so you have to discover all these things. Har kuch Raishi Nandi or Shri Guru se nahi ho sakta hai. Mm. <laughs> you know, like, at least on Facebook, we seem to be the two poles. <laughs> and now Ramachandra is becoming another. <laughs> like, like, all spiritual matters are referred. Let us defer them to these three people. You know, nahi ho ga. <laughs> You have to learn all these things. That bit about the monkey and the kundalini, it's something I figured out on my own. I didn't read it in a book. You know, you have to develop that inner vision. You have to develop. I am asking you to become more. I am asking. I am not saying challenging, but I am <clears> saying like, yeah, uh, how many people came on streets when Shivalinga was offended? Correct. We don't come out onto the streets because, you know, our bosses might get upset. You're participating in politics. And then if we come out onto the street, somebody might hit us. And then what will happen to us? Anyways. No, yes, I understand, I understand the question of the town hall, but we are not socially yeah, developed enough to have a town hall. Yeah. Town hall is in recognized <clears throat> countries where the... Yeah. Democratic uh, process is much older than it is. We are not socially developed enough. We are not in a very advanced state of society. We have primitive societies. We have semi-primitive societies. We have basic industrial society, postmodern society, all simultaneously existing. You know, so it's very difficult to do those kind of things. But I am saying. Do not look for external solutions. My entire talk has been do not look for external solutions. And it's a little depressing that constantly the questions are about external solutions. And, and uh, still wearing uh, around politics and politicians. Yeah, absolutely. The, you know, if you're, and, uh, if you're hoping these things will be fixed by politicians, then I'm telling you, no. Politicians respond to incentives. They need incentives. And they need to be afraid of us. And this whole podcast, not is about, uh, whole podcast is about asking what is your skin in the game? How much of what, what is it that you <laughs> What are you willing to do? What yeah. effort are you willing to make? I am asking for more effort. I am asking for more effort. I am asking for sadhana. I am asking for developing of buddhi. I am asking for developing of relationships with the community, with the temple. See, there Facebook are... say, you know, there is one temple which Facebook has created and that is Kangeshwari temple, which Heman, yeah. Heman <laughs> you know, yeah. like, it was an entirely Facebook initiative. People from all over the world contributed money. Somebody is donating a flag. Somebody is donating uh, this thing, uh, silver earring. Somebody, it's very fascinating to see that because we are all fragmented and scattered and yet we all have a temple that is ours in one way. Because we have all contributed to it. We have all, you know, and I kept give, making updates on the Kumbha Vishekam, the reconsecration, 
and so everybody felt personally connected to the temple and that in a way it is a very small temple it is slightly expanding but that personal connect that you have to a devta in a particular temple is way more important than any larger uh, social issues and those kind of things for dharma it is much more important so i always say that kangeshwari is like the first facebook temple <laughs> it happened because of, <laughs> it happened because of facebook it happened because of uh, you know like all the donations everything came from facebook at one time we were running out of money i made one appeal and immediately it was covered immediately it was covered and then you know like uh, everything has been set up very well all the accounts are clear there is no manipulation there is no possibility of you know and the proper trust has been established and everything so it was a pretty wonderful and i really felt okay this is the kind of initiative that we can get behind because it had only dharma and no no political Purely dharma. There was a dilapidated Devi temple. The murtis same chhataya gaya. Badiya badiya new murtis were bought, reconsecrated, prana pratishta re-established. It was a magnificent thing to see. Even though it happened at such a small scale, it was not famous all over the world. But for the 500, 600 people involved with it, all of you have got blessings. All of you have got blessings of the mother for that. Be assured of that. if you have participated in reconsecrating a temple you have no idea what level of blessings flow your way yes very good point become self employed i totally agree we need more entrepreneurs yeah. we need more business do not let any other person uh, financially choke you <clears throat> do not let any other person financially choke you i absolutely agree even swami vivekananda by the way used to keep saying that look this is your problem your desire for a sarkari no- job this is your problem why don't you become financially independent so it is very much in line with swami ji's thinking also he said that you should become entrepreneur i agree we need to create that entrepreneurial spirit we need to create that independent spirit do not let another person bully you with the control over your money do not let that happen do not let your life be at the mercy of another person okay anything we have left out like over there finally it's been almost two hours i think that's enough yeah i think we've covered uh, you know we may not most have asked the co- specific questions but i think we have in the, in the back and forth we have covered all the questions that uh, yeah that did come up here as well as that that had come up earlier from the Mm, let me see if there are any issues that we have not covered. I think more or less we have answered. If we have not answered the specific question, we have answered the larger perspective meta question. Yeah. I think more or less all the questions that have been asked to us we have answered. There are some specific questions in the chat which I refuse to answer. I am okay with that also. But uh, yeah, I think that is. Uh, i think that is uh, i mean is any 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 question in the chat or anything or ramesh anything that you would like to say uh no i i don't have anything specific i think uh, i think there has been there has been a long uh, long term demand that you no know, shri guru come and uh, do do more videos i mean there are already already so uh, any any keep saying that there are so many videos that are already available that people should go and watch i think in that 320 sense, like, videos is not enough for you guys <laughs> <laughs> right i think the uh, you know uh, no d- d- despite all of that i think uh, people genuinely are uh, you you said that you've made a difference i think you've made a difference to so many people that which which is which is where the the the, the whole thing is for example uh, i i can say it openly as well you know in the last uh, several, several, several years that i have known you known you itself i it, it has made so much of a difference to me uh, particularly i i might not have come to you directly you know asked any specific questions and anything but I, i should say that so much of what i have read or so much of what i have learned from you or interact or learned from the interactions that i have had with you has meant so much i, I cannot recognize myself say from Five years ago versus where I am today, in terms of every single aspect of my life. You're not I, the only person who said that. 
So, so like, you, you came like a catalyst, and I got transformed. I can't even recognize myself. You know, like, absolutely. I think. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. that that's the job of a guru. No, I mean, then yeah. I'm doing something right. You know, I'm not as impactful as I should be, but I'm impactful enough. Yeah. No. No. I mean. Uh, so that that I think that and uh, I, I can't. Uh, I, I think it's. it's uh, to, to you know spend two hours and have uh, to take this up specifically i think i can't thank you enough for having come on the no no uh, this is this is not work for me this is enjoyment for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah like uh, see see for a for for a guru type people these kind of issues are our job mm, these kind mm, of mm. things are the things that we engage with you know and i want clarity of thought that i regard as a greatest feeling we have yeah, absolutely we, no clarity of thought and no independence of thought either. I you know, like one, no, so sorry. Yeah, I, think, I think there is one question which talks about. I think the 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 Gyanvapi uh, shivling that was found. I think they drilled a hole on top of it. So I think that question is to do uh, the, the, the physical damage. It, they, they it would. Need to be. It will of course need uh, puna pratishtha. It will of course need puna pratishtha. Uh, people who have knowledge in the Agamas will have to examine it and decide whether it can be reconsecrated or a new one has to be placed. I would say a new one has to be placed. My personal opinion, but you know, since I have not seen it, I cannot pronounce on that. But generally, the rule is if something has been damaged like that, then you know, though I did, I understood uh, once we had a long uh, Pankaj Saxena made. Uh, he made an interesting suggestion. There was a lot of debate. A lot of people got involved. It was one of the very fruitful and productive um, discussions where he said that since they break these temples to break these murtis to intimidate us, we should put them back into worship. Mm. And of course, uh, Agama type people like me, we said, but you know, all the uh, pranic channels have been broken. Yeah, broken. So, you know, it's not a good idea. I would say rebuild an exact replica of the Murti or the Shivalingam, reconsecrate it and start again. You know, but the actual damage Murti, there is a reason why they say damage Murti, damage Shivalingam should not be worshipped. It becomes very hanikarak for the worshipper. It starts drawing energy from the worshipper. So my instinct would be uh, reconsecrate with a new Kumbha Vishegam, Purna Prana Pratishta with a new Shivalingam. That would be my instinct. But I do not know what is the state and stature. And there are some differences between South Indian um, methodologies for Prana Pratishta and North Indian. In North India, it might be different. Because uh, somebody was explaining to me that some of the damage in Kashi looks bad, but it's not really that bad. Because there was a technique done to remove the Shakti from the Shivalingam, transfer it to another, and then they broke the Shivalingam which uh, perhaps it is so. I do not have much knowledge about it. But uh, from what I was told, in most cases, that procedure was not done. They just went in and done. they broke it. Yeah. If that was so, then it doesn't look so bad as yeah, it but, is. But, if, yeah, but, if, the, if, yeah, if, but the uh, but they also brought down the Akshay Vat, which is an unpardonable. Yeah, so, you know, the fact that you cannot tell me that they show respect in one matter and no respect in another matter. You know, if you have Shraddha, you have Shraddha uniformly. You don't have uh, specific Shraddha activating at specific times. So, you know, I, I refuse to believe that. I refuse to believe that. So, so yes, Gyanvapi mein naya dalna hi padega. That's my instinct. But since I'm not directly involved, and it must be done by the Banaras people. You see, that is my most mm. important thing. The Banaras Shraddhalu, the B Banaras devotees should, uh, Vishwasigal, as we say in Malayalam, you know, mm. the, the faithful, the, the Banaras, they should decide what to do with the Shivalinga because it is theirs. At a deep level, it is theirs. Of course, it belongs to all of us because it is Kashi. But they are the people in responsibility. They are the community in responsibility. So they, sh they must take that call. I think they will take the call for a new one. But this one must not be thrown away. It must be preserved carefully with the damage visible and big fat sign saying this is what has done to it. 
you know, like uh, we must not allow this to fade away. We must not allow this to be forgotten or whitewashed. So I would not interfere because it is up to the Banaras community. Kashi walo ka hi baat hai. I would always say in every case the last word. While of course, as Hindus, we also have a right to say something about the matter. We also have the right to make suggestions. But the community in position must have the final say. The community in position must have the final say. You know that is always how we've done things. That's always how we've done things. I. I don't think they will keep the shivalinga, not in its current state. Also, because of the way it has been desecrated and insulted, yeah. I don't think they will keep it like that. Nava Pashana Vigra of Shavrimala is destroyed by the Kanu. How do we re establish Sapratishtas? We can't because it has been destroyed. You know, something else. See, Savrimala was a kava. They took a kava and they made it into a temple, which is absolutely the wrong thing to do. So, Savrimala, please don't get me on it. It gets me very agitated. The kind of absolute horror stories that are visited about the temple by the secular state. Please don't get me activated on it. You know, like so. Savrimala is a different. But when you're asking, what do we do about? Re-establish such pratishtas. Do people want to re-establish? Hindu society does not seem to. Does not seem let to. us let us let us be very clear about it. The deformers who call themselves reformers, the deformers have been willing elections. The traditionalists have been losing. The traditional Hindu side have been losing. We are not able to make our case in public. We are not able to be persuasive. The people who are Deforming the Hindu religion are the ones who are persuasive. So we need people who are persuasive on our side. We need people who are influential. We need people that others will defer. They will put their judgment out of the way. You know, the the wrong people are getting the arguments. They are winning the arguments. Absolutely, the wrong people on our side are winning the argument. You know, so uh, we need to understand this. That if we want to preserve our culture, we need to be more aggressive. If we want to preserve our traditions. We need to be more aggressive. We need to go out. But first of all, you yourself needs to be the example, no? If you are afraid, you know, somebody told Hemant, "I will be an undercover bhakta of Hanuman." <laughs> and Hemant, <laughs> Hemant asked, "Why?" And he said, "Oh, society is not ready for it." Hemant said, "You be ready for it. Society will adjust." You know, you you just show that you are a Hanuman Bhakta. See, this is the problem. Even to say that I have a liking for a Devta is now a social embarrassment. How will anybody progress? No, I do not. I did not meet this Swami. I, his goal is to build Shatruvad. More power to him. Jai Ho Swami Ji Ka. If there is a Swami like that, I am so pleased to hear it. More power to him. We will all support him. We will all encourage him. But Hora, I see. Don't even though I make all these dire pronouncements, please don't think I am uh, pessimistic. It is not so. I say all these things because I am a realist. So I don't want you to live in some delusional world that everything is fine. But like I said, I have lost faith in politicians. I have not lost faith in the devdas. I have not lost faith in people like Swami Vivekananda. You know, their Shakti is still alive, which is a real thing. I have not lost faith in somebody like Sri Aurobindo, Ramana Maharshi. You know, we have great masters guiding us. We have devtas guiding us. Please do the pujas in the manner the devtas have prescribed to the rishis. Don't do pujas in the manner you want to do. <laughs> do according to the vidis. Do according to the agamas. Do according to the tantras. Please, please activate your inner self. You know, act, prajalita, become on fire, becoming a become a fiery person. And I am saying it. It is an individual responsibility. This business of outsourcing responsibility to charismatic individuals and idiotic organizations will not work anymore. Each person has to say, "Dharma lives and dies with me." My responsibility, and then see what happens. If we have two thousand people like that, no, many things will change. 
I think that's enough. We've gone like yeah. two hours, ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Sarvam Shivamayam. Thank you. Om Shiva Chidambaram. My blessings to all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and uh, see you till next time. Thank you. Bye. Namaste.